Why does it feel good when bad people suffer? Does it feel good because their suffering is good? That's the question which I want to address in this video, but within a specific context. And that context is scam baiting. For those who don't know, scam baiting is the practice, often live streamed or recorded for YouTube, of messing with online scammers, pretending to fall for their scam, leading them on and wasting their time. Scam baiting is interesting and creative and funny and very often weird, but there's also a side to it that is both darker and more satisfying than all of these. So let's get into it. And if you watch until the end, there might even be some gift cards in it for you. So here's the issue. Scam baiters, like Kit Bogo over here, spend a lot of energy and effort trying to make scammers experience distressing emotions like confusion, frustration, and anger. Scammer rage specifically is one of the most entertaining things about scam baiting. And it is fun, sure, but how could it be okay to willfully inflict suffering on another person? especially for entertainment. You could say that it's justified because scam baiting serves some other purpose, like wasting the scammer's time, stopping them from stealing from others, and being educational, providing information on how scams work so they can be avoided. You could then claim that these goods outweigh any moral problems with scam baiting. Two replies. First, inflicting emotional suffering on scammers seems to work against these goods in many cases. For example, the emotional suffering of the scammer makes it less likely that their time will be wasted because they'll be more likely to hang up. This shows us that the suffering of scammers is very often the primary aim of a lot of scam baiting because other aims are subordinated to it. And second, to say that we're balancing something implies that inflicting the emotional suffering is actually bad. But remember that for many of us, it doesn't feel that way. Making the scammers suffer through their scam seems fine, good even. It feels like justice, like they deserve it. So there's still something that needs to be explained here. Like, why do scammers deserve to suffer? I'm sure the answer that many of you are thinking is this. It's because they're bad. They're criminals. We sentence criminals to prison time, which undoubtedly causes them suffering, and that's okay. So why not here? But punishments like prison are supposed to serve other aims, like rehabilitation, protecting society, deterrence, and so on. So in those cases, the suffering is justified, presumably, because it's not what we're aiming at. It's just an unfortunate side effect of some good thing we're trying to achieve. But not much of that is possible when Kid Boga makes scammers suffer. And as I've already suggested, the scammer's suffering seems to be the primary aim of a lot of what he does. Also, we can't rely too heavily on our feelings of good and bad either. Many people have caused a lot of unjustifiable suffering to others and felt good about it. So we have to at least entertain the possibility that something which feels just and deserved actually isn't. And so we should try to see if there's any deeper justification for this. For that, we might look to theories about retributive justice, which is the idea that punishing wrongdoers is a good in itself not for any extra good that it pursues, but simply because the guilty deserve punishment as a basic feature of what morality requires. Retributive justice seems to describe how we feel about the rightness of punishing scammers, and many philosophers have attempted to give a justification for it as well, although many more are skeptical. So let's look into it. To quickly summarize, retributive justice is punishing people who do wrong things because they deserve it. And it's also a basic part of how many of us feel about right and wrong. For some, retributive justice is built into the nature of reality itself, maybe in the form of a god who judges the dead, or perhaps karma. But here we're going to treat it as something which we choose to do, something which is up to us to make happen. And this is why it calls out for justification. Because as something which we do, retributive justice not only costs us time and effort, but also comes with a certain risk. Sure, we punish because it's something that feels good or satisfies us. On a charitable interpretation, this is because we sense that retributive justice is the right thing to do, but the line between this and outright cruelty is very thin and hard to spot. So there's a risk of simply creating new injustices and becoming wrongdoers ourselves. Next, it's actually not clear if retributive justice is the right way to treat wrongdoers. What exactly is their suffering supposed to do? Nothing tangible is given or exchanged. No actions are reversed. No one gets their money back. No one gets their pain unfelt. In the case of scam baiting, the scammer's victims don't know the scammer is being punished. And very often, the scammer doesn't even know either. Some, like Foucault and Nietzsche, argue that there is no real justification for retributive justice. That it's all just a mask for things like resentment, cruelty, a desire for power and revenge. So as it turns out, justifying or even explaining retributive justice seems to be quite difficult. And now it's time to reveal my scam. I'm not going to provide a justification of retributive justice here. The reason is, I don't know how. But if we interpret scam baiting as a kind of retributive justice, which I think is our best hope for justifying it, 
then I think we can evaluate it according to standards that philosophers have put forward. So here we go, the pros and cons of scam baiting as retributive justice. First, the negatives. I've already mentioned that scam baiting usually doesn't communicate to the scammer that they're being punished for doing wrong. In fact, attempts to do so can actually lessen their punishment. But whether this is a negative or not depends on whether you think punishment should be communicative. Next, scam baiting is not conducted according to due process or law. This may not be problematic to you if you consider vigilantism as a legitimate way to achieve justice, but most theories of punishment think that it must be legitimized through some kind of agreed upon process or authority. Scam baiting could also count as inhumane punishment, that is, cruel or unusual. If cruelty is defined as taking pleasure and causing suffering, then scam baiting seems to fit the description. Now, let's look at some positives of scam baiting as a form of punishment. First, punishment generally needs to be justified due to its cost, but scam baiting seems relatively inexpensive. We are all well compensated by its entertainment value, and scam baiters even make money from it. And while we could worry that this opens up the process to corruption and abuse, there are some factors which make abuse unlikely. For example, scam baiting seems to fall way short of what most of us would think scammers deserve anyway. Scam baiting also punishes scammers during the act for which they should be punished, which removes most of the uncertainty and potential for overreach that comes with other forms of punishment. And finally, scam baiters also lack the power to abuse their position easily. They have a knowledge advantage, which gives them strategic power, but they lack dominant coercive power. Which brings me to the final point, which I think might be decisive in favor of scam baiting. To repeat, the punishment that scam baiters inflict is not coercive. The scammers can hang up whenever they want. Their punishment is extended only as far as they choose to pursue their own lies and greed. In other words, the scammer is punished to the extent that they choose to commit the action for which they should be punished. Now contrast this with other conventional forms of punishment, like imprisonment where a judge has to determine after the fact how many years of prison matches a specific crime. And if the purpose of putting someone in jail is to protect or deter others, then this is also treating the wrongdoer as an object, or like a dangerous animal, but not as a full person. The punishment of scam baiting, however, treats the scam baiter as a responsible agent, worthy of being held responsible for their wrongdoing, and punishes them only insofar as they continue to choose to do something wrong, in effect allowing them to punish themselves. As such, scam baiting as a form of punishment respects the autonomy of the scammer and respects their capacity as agents to make decisions for themselves. This is the paradox of scam baiting as retributive justice. While trying to humiliate and make fun of scammers, as a punishment, scam baiting also does the most to respect them as persons. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Hello, are you still there? Check out some extra questions I've added to the comments below. If you want to see more videos in the future, don't forget to subscribe. And as always, thanks for listening.